I chose an open source textbook because I want to make sure that my students have access to the textbook day one and that there are no financial barriers to that class. As a first generation college student from East Tennessee, when I first attended community college, I remember being utterly shocked that I was paying almost a thousand dollars for textbooks. And these were books that were unnecessarily expensive in my mind when previous editions would have been just fine. In fact, the tuition was comparable to what they cost for the textbooks. I chose to use an OER textbook with an undergraduate research class this past semester. The text was available through an online link and included preset chapter tabs and embedded videos that made it easily navigatable. One of the most important reasons that I use OER in my classes is because students will be able to access OER long after my class is over and long after they graduate from EKU. Uh, most books these days are electronic, which means that students are buying access to those books and that access only lasts for a certain amount of time and then that book effectively disappears along with all the information in that book that the students didn't somehow copy down or memorize. But with OER, the book is available to them certainly during my class, but forever after that. Not only was this textbook free, but students tell me that they're really glad that the text continues to be available after they finish the course. They don't have to sell it back to the bookstore and it doesn't disappear like many of the online rentals do. In my experience, OER textbooks are often more focused and streamlined than for-profit texts. In fall 2020, for my intro to professional and technical writing course, the OER texts I found were actually a better fit for the course content I wanted to cover than the traditionally published textbooks I had used in past semesters. Adding open source textbooks to my classes uh, was so easy. Um, it literally just replaces the existing textbook and it becomes something that I can put on Blackboard or in some cases you can actually just provide hyperlinks to the uh, textbook but you can put that right there on Blackboard. So um, I became aware of the uh, OER concept and wanted to use that uh, if possible and I couldn't find any existing OER materials specific to occupational safety. One of the things uh, that is uh, you know current to the field is the use of respiratory protection from airborne hazards such as the COVID-19 uh, virus. So that is um, part of our uh, subject area. We, we try to protect employees. So I decided to create my own textbook, which is an ongoing project, but um, I have uh, learned quite a bit uh, from our, uh, our folks uh, here at EKU on OERs. And uh, it is now my plan to include as much multimedia materials, uh, podcasts, video, uh, images that I myself uh, have uh, taken, um, including 360 degree video uh, in the textbook. Um, it's my hope that my fellow faculty will use uh, the, the uh, textbook. Students will certainly will use it. Um, I hope that um, it will be an evolving um, resource that uh, faculty and maybe just occupational safety professionals out in the field uh, will add to. And also uh, I, uh, I intend to add to uh, the textbook uh, through the use of student developed materials as well, which are referred to as, as renewable assignments or recyclable assignments. So um, ultimately I hope that the, uh, that the textbook I develop will be used by current students as well as former students who have gone on uh, out into the um, workforce and are practicing members of the profession. I'm also involved in a project creating a new customized OER for EKU's first semester first year writing course, English 101. My colleague Jill Parrott and I are working alongside graduate assistant Jonathan Collins to gather and collate existing OER public domain, and Creative Commons licensed materials that support the learning outcomes and assignments specific to our program, as well as materials we believe will resonate with our students' interests and experiences. We're also reaching out to EKU faculty seeking original contributions. 
We plan to involve students directly with the OER by creating opportunities for them to submit sample essays, reflections, and advice for future students. I'm really excited about the potential for OER to enliven our program. I see the creation of a custom in-house OER as supporting the work of our courses in ways that a more generalized text often does not. I'm also excited about the opportunities for publication and professional development creating an OER opens up, as faculty and students alike will have the chance for author and editor lines in the text. The in-house OER also gives us greater flexibility to continually adjust and update the text to keep it timely and relevant to our program and to our students. Jacob and I are working pretty closely together on a project that Appalachian Studies at EKU started in the fall semester. We are launching the Accessible Appalachia Open Access Textbook uh, for Appalachian Studies. And we sent out a call for papers for folks to submit their abstracts to us. We received over 60 in every possible subject area. It's a really rich set of materials and they will be made available to all of our students in Intro to Appalachia. We have about 500 to 700 students in that single course over multiple sections every semester. And this is going to be a great benefit for them, not only academically, but also financially for their own benefit. When I asked for student feedback on using the OER text, they were overwhelmingly positive. One student even pointed out that she could access the textbook on her phone while she was waiting in line or sitting in a doctor's office waiting for an appointment. There's no need for you to lug around a heavy textbook because it's right there on your phone or your laptop. So I started using an open source textbook in my intro sociology class, and I saw an almost immediate change in my DFW rates. Uh, the DFW is a measurement of students getting Ds, Fs, or withdrawing from the class. And the thing that I saw is most importantly, I saw far fewer withdrawals um, in that first month, uh, because I think students had access to the textbook and they never felt like they fell behind. I also, at the end of the semester, really have fewer Ds and Fs because students stay engaged. One other thing that I see too is I have far fewer instances where students are falling off the radar or becoming less involved. Um, because the textbook is there, because they can access it, um, they're able to stay current on their materials. They don't have to worry about losing the textbook mid-semester, and it's just always available to them, whether they want to print that out, have it as a download, even view it on their phone. Um, the textbook is always there. And so I think that that helps to make sure students are able to stay involved and not fall behind. I would say that this project in general has helped me across the board. Uh, regardless of any specific discipline that I'm working in, uh, just because it's helped me craft my writing style better. Uh, I'm able to make things flow a lot nicer, have things structured a lot better grammatically. Uh, even my citations look stronger. So it's been a real blessing. Uh, and I will also say as a student that just open access materials mean a ton. Uh, they certainly help if you feel constrained financially, um, and they also kind of allow you to just revisit that over and over. Uh, I've certainly found myself using resources that I was introduced to in one class that were open access and free that I later on, the later on down the line used in research, research papers for other classes or just however I could. Excellent. So Jacob is not only working for me as a student worker in his intern role, but he's also receiving credit in his Appalachian Studies minor. So this project is going to be excellent all around, and we're very grateful to offer this through EKU Libraries. We can have the textbook on day one. It's available to everyone without cost. And I think that's going to be something that is so critical as we think about what education will look like in the future. And it's certainly the path that I've dedicated myself to using for all my classes going forward. I will continue to use OERs in my courses and definitely will be encouraging others to do so. 
As an academic librarian working with collections for over 15 years, um, I can say that shepherding OER adoption on EKU's campus has been one of the biggest impact projects I've participated in. Um, not only do I see the results with students who are not having to re request textbooks via interlibrary loan as often, um, and who are saving money that they can use for other things or not take out loans, um, I have seen the potential for um, innovative pedagogy by faculty and the excitement as they figure out all the the options that they have once they adopt OERs. Um, I hope that's been evident by this video. I think all the faculty who've been working on this project are just fantastic. And, um, and we hope that folks will take another look at OERs. Um, if you think that there's not an OER available in your field, um, check again and really take a hard look and think about how you might be able to incorporate these in your classes. Thanks. <laughs>